Item number SCP-1932 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-1932 is temporarily contained on-site until a more permanent method of containment is found. As components of SCP-1932 do not exhibit anomalous effects when removed, even if reattached, relocation of SCP-1932 is not considered feasible at this time. Temporary containment measures consist of standard 3-meter-high construction area fencing around the perimeter of SCP-1932. The area should be patrolled by no fewer than three guards at any one time, under the cover of construction workers. Due to the anomalous effects of SCP-1932, it is currently believed highly unlikely that these containment measures will fail. However, the urban location of SCP-1932 makes an off-site permanent containment considerably more desirable. Update. As of the events of 2013, Designated Incident 1932-Alpha, all exploration of SCP-1932 is suspended. See Addendum 1932-B. Description. SCP-1932 is a set of playground equipment located in the London Borough of in a small, open, grassy area. It consists of three main pieces, designated SCP-1932-1 through-3. SCP-1932-1 is the largest piece of equipment, and comprises of two wooden towers approximately 2.5 meters in height, connected by a bridge composed of wooden slats laid across a base of iron chains. A chute 3 meters in length extends from one of the towers. SCP-1932-2 is a set of monkey bars, a wooden frame 5 meters in length and 1 meter in width, with regularly spaced metal hoops for swinging along. SCP-1932-3 is a pair of wooden swings, suspended from a wooden frame by rope. For a more detailed description and photographs of all equipment, see Document 1932-5. SCP-1932 anomalous effects present themselves when any of the structures are interacted with by persons under the age of 16, who universally find the play equipment much more intimidating than it is in actuality. The perceived safety and desirability of the equipment is in direct proportion to the age of the perceiver. Persons approaching the age of 16 view it with only a little suspicion, and younger children experience extreme terror when observing SCP-1932. These effects extend to moving and static images of the equipment, although with diminished effects. See Test 1932-A through H for interview logs and test results. SCP-1932 shows signs of disrepair consistent with months of disuse, such as small amounts of lichen on its wooden components and rust on its metal parts, but despite this all components were proven to be in complete working order and safe for use when tested by Foundation personnel. Addendum 1932-A Thorough investigation of material samples taken from SCP-1932 have revealed that all of its surfaces present above the ground are coated in a thin layer of an unidentified substance, and patterns which suggest it is the remnants of a liquid applied to the equipment which has since dried. This substance consists primarily 82% of urea, with the remainder taken up by a variety of unidentified biochemicals. Testing on this substance is scheduled to begin on March 18, 2000. Addendum 1932-B, Incident 1932-Alpha Exploratory testing was authorized for 2013 using D-8413 as a test subject, supervised by researcher Grant. D-8413 was chosen for the genetic conditions he is afflicted with, which have given him an approximated mental age of six years, and for his tractability and obedience. Previous testing, see Test 1932-G for details, determined that he was affected by SCP-1932's effects. D-8413 is equipped with a two-way communication headset. Where are we going? We're going to a play park. Can I play? There's just a couple of small things we want you to do first, and then you can play as much as you like. D-8413 is led through the perimeter and towards SCP-1932. He appears unsettled by SCP-1932 and requires a reasonable amount of convincing to climb up onto SCP-1932-1. He remarks upon the height of it and how long it will take him to get to the top. It takes him 17 seconds to reach the first platform of SCP-1932-1. Wow, that took a long time. You guys are so far down, it's really cold up here. Note, ambient air temperature is 18 degrees Celsius. You don't need to shout, we can hear you through the headset. Well done for climbing all the way up. 
I'm going to pass you up a tape measure. I want you to hold on to it, and then tell me what the number says, okay? Still shouting. How will you get it? Oh, okay, um, the little red number says a 2, and then a 3, then a 8. They're all red, not just a 2? They're all red. Note, this appears to indicate that the platform at SCP-1932-1 is 238 meters in height. Can I come down now? It's really scary up here. It really smells, and there's all this sticky green brown stuff. Not just yet. Can you cross over the bridge to the other platform, please? The bridge? It's really broken. All the bits of wood are missing. It's definitely safe, D-8413. Please cross. D-8413 begins to very slowly cross the bridge. At approximately a third of the way across the bridge, he stops and looks nervously over his shoulder. I don't like this. I'm going to crawl. It's safer. D-8413 gets on his hands and knees. Halfway across the bridge, he stops. Stop shaking the bridge, you guys. It's not funny. It's scary. We are not shaking the bridge, D-8413. You are completely safe. Please continue to the other side. D-8413 does not respond and starts rocking from side to side, making the bridge shake slightly. D-8413? D-8413 does not respond. D-8413, please respond. You may return back across the bridge if you like. D-8413 still does not respond, and resumes rocking faster and faster until the motion is sufficient for him to fall off the bridge onto the sandy floor beneath. His body impacts the floor with a much greater force than expected. Testing confirms that D-8413 has deceased, and cause of death is determined to be blunt force trauma consistent with a fall from over 200 meters in height.